probably the the, the funnest stuff at the very end is um, we're going to show the uh, 300i full director's cut commercial, which is about twice as long as the current one. It has a whole bunch of uh, shots that people haven't seen, pilots sitting down and taking off in the in the 300i, which is all pretty cool because it's all in it's all in engine. It's all that that that's the assets and that's the animation that will be when you sit down in your uh, cockpit. Uh, so that's kind of cool. But that's at the very end of the. So you could probably go and catch a few hours of sleep, come back and uh, and uh, and um, watch that. And then uh, I guess that's kind of, uh, I mean, there's it. There's a few things on my schedule, but I actually don't think we're going to be showing them. Um, and we have a making of hangar video around about 7 a.m. These are all Austin time, so it's about 5 a.m. So. Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, and no, no more questions, because I know you all have a schedule to keep. Just uh, one thing uh, for you. I would recommend that uh, if you are any at all a cigar guy, I did send a bunch to Austin, but uh, I can't you know, say how long they'll last in uh, other Chris's humidor, so you might want to let them know if you want any of them saved for you. Yeah, no, they, they, the, art, the artists all have a, they have a little end-of-the-day cigar smoking uh, like ritual they do. Yeah, I joined them for that when I, I visited in May. Uh, very cool. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, well, I'm there. I'm there. Uh, I'm, there. I'm not there next week, but I'm there the week after. So, so hopefully, maybe there's a few of them left. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Chris. Uh, you're more than welcome. Thank you, Matthew. Hi, everybody. I'm here with our programmers of CIG. Uh, Jason Spangler, our CTO, our lead, Tom Sawyer, Kyle Rockman, Jeff Uriarty, and Brendan Jackson. Hello. So, we are here to talk about the process to make Star Citizen happen. Jason, you look very concerned, and you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens, Jason? How do you get everybody else to uh, make this happen? Uh, well, we're starting with CryEngine, as you know, and that's a very big code base. So we are uh, adapting it and adding things needed to it to work for a space flight uh, game and also as a large online game with a persistent universe. So we kind of, from the top down, we've looked at that, created a big list of tasks and systems that need done, created, adapted, and now we are working on the ones needed in the beginning for the hangar app and for other features and as we get to each one before we start it we break it down into much smaller more detailed tasks and talk about the technical design and the limitations and budgets for the uh, performance and then we implement and create them by writing code and also reusing existing technology. All right so it doesn't look like you're in the Bahamas though you're in Montreal right? Yes. What are you doing there? I'm at Behavior uh, meeting a lot of programmers uh, and other folks who could work on Star Citizen from uh, this studio. Okay. And what about the other guys here? Tom, what do you do in terms of programming? Uh, currently I'm getting the initial uh, back-end server architecture in place, so uh, just, uh, you know, I think I wrote about seven or eight different servers, you know, that are providing different services. and. We have the Star Citizen uh, client, you know, connect to the servers, do uh, account authentication, and get your pledge data and uh, item data to fill out the, the hangar app, you know, with the items that you've purchased on the website. So just uh, getting that, uh, you know, architecture and framework in place. And uh, once we get that working, then it's, uh, you know, back to kind of the MMO style of the gameplay, you know, creating worlds and having people join them and, you know, uh, large scale, you know, universe. Wow, this sounds like a lot of work. Kyle, what are you, what are you doing? Um, so I'm a tools programmer and I basically write anything that we need to make the production schedule easier or better. Um, one of the th things that I'm focusing on right now is the actual installation, launching, and patching of Star Citizen, the initial hangar module that we will release. So we have this uh, you know, just basic Windows installer that installs the launcher and then it downloads all the game data that's necessary to play um, that we uh, patch so we can put out incremental portions of it and just keep patching to your current existing content directory. 
um, and then from there you actually launch the game. You log in. We, you know, I uh, interface with Tom a lot where we are going to hand over the login credentials, and the game client is going to use it to connect to the server and stuff like that. So this patching scenario. So if I'm in Australia, for example, is that any different from if I'm here in Austin? No, I mean it'll just once you log in and you're a, a user that can download the game, it will. Uh, connect to our uh, CDN. It's a it's a network that ha ho hosts all the data for the game and just downloads the stuff that's relative for the client and then uh, launches the game client, which ends up talking to the server stuff that Tom is writing. All right, and then Jeff, how do you come into the mix? I'm a gameplay programmer, so I uh, develop the the game systems, uh, or I, I implement the the game systems that the designers design. Um, currently, um, working with Brendan on. Uh, I'm doing the, the gameplay portion of the of the shield uh, to kind of you know, get that hooked up and get it, get it working in the ship. So excuse my ignorance, what is the shield? Uh, the shield's the, um, the the shield on the ship, and it's it's um, it's kind of the, the first line of defense, like when you get hit. So you mean if like an enemy hits me, then it would first hit the shield, and you know the shield would eventually wear down, and then it would start hitting you know, the components on the ship itself. Oh, so how strong are you going to make my shield? <laughs> as strong as you want it. <laughs> and Brendan, what do you do? Um, I work on the visual effects for the game. Um, so far I've been developing things like laser bolts, uh, the shield as Jeff mentioned, kind of just working through how a player understands he's attacking somebody else through the visuals and um, you know, sees the damage that hits him as it hits its shield. We get the initial kind of estimates and we work with those and then once we've kind of got everything in the game working, the designers come along and the artists come along and refine everything we've done. Because, you know, just because we, we set it up with the original estimates doesn't mean that it's fun still. So, Jason, does this sound right to you? You're looking slightly concerned again. Um, yes. One thing I would add is that we look at all the different types of specs that the designers want, and we create systems that have those specs. So then, and then we give them some sample data uh, with like a sample ship. And when they create new things, new ships, new items, they can then fill in the the data with the values they want. But we still have to implement the systems that will use those specs and behave however the numbers uh, state. So how difficult is that between ships? Do you have to program entirely from scratch again, or can you use functionality from what you have from, say, the Aurora LX? Do you have to do it all again for 300i? We definitely make it so we make a ship system so that the system would work for all the ships. Um, and then sometimes we need to add specific things that might be specific for like a few ships or one ship for maybe how it's laid out or the or because it has some, something special about it but we definitely try to make systems that will work for all ships. What are some of the good points that you see about using the cry engine? Are you asking me? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well it definitely uh, very good graphically, um, uh, very full featured um, it has a lot of the networking uh, and bandwidth and latency considerations we need. So it's a good foundation for us. It, it just like any engine, it's a large code base that has had many programmers working on, working on it over many, many years. So you can find varying uh, degrees of difficulty and commenting and such in the uh, engine code. So sometimes it's just some things are more difficult just because it's solving a more complex problem for one system. But this all sounds beyond my reach. It's C++, right? That's about all I know. I can't, I can't read anything on Chris's computers. He has four screens <laughs> up and it all looks like nothing yeah. to me. <laughs> we should help him by just uh, getting on his keyboard and typing yeah. random stuff in sometime. Wonderful to find that one. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him you're Easter optimizing egg. his Why code. Why is this not building? <laughs> Easter egg hunt. Yeah. All right, Jason. We're, we're going to let you off the hook now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this is our programming team, and now you have a sense of what they do on a daily basis.